data and its analysis in AP biology. This is the basic uh, statistics, what you have to be familiar with. Statistics can be descriptive statistics and it summarizes the data. It also visualizes the variation in the data, identifies correlations between the different variables, and identifies a confidence interval for the values. The other branch of statistics is, besides the descriptive statistics, is the inferential statistics. It is all about using data from a sample and make inference about the population. We will use the standard error for inferential statistics. Gathering data. The data can be qualitative data. This is the categorical data exam and uh, quantitative data. The qualitative data, example four, for example, male and female, whether it's a, a, how soft the cat is, basically based on qualitative traits. A quantitative measuring can be measurement data. Example for that is the height of the students, for example or the continuous dependent and independent variable values. And the count data is, for example, how many heads are from uh, flipping a penny or how many times you can uh, throw, uh, throw fives uh, with a dice. Sample size. It is really important how big the sample should be or how small it should be because uh, it is time consuming to measure data. And you don't wanna just have extremely big because it's uh, not only time but uh, money too, but you don't wanna just have very small amount of data either to draw conclusion or you will not be able to draw conclusion for the whole population. So your measurement can be uh, described by accuracy uh, and precision. This will be the second. The accu precision. Accuracy means if I have a bullseye, bullseye and I will get into the middle, that it, it means that my shots, dart throwings, or whatever, are accurate. But if I'm outside somewhere, but in a bunch, that means it's precise, how close the measurements are together. It not necessarily has to be accurate. Graphing. Making a histogram or the frequency diagram, histogram is uh, also called the frequency diagram, that tells us how frequently the data appears in that range. For example, we have, uh, this is how it would look like, the histograms, and the small brackets or the small columns can represent the height brackets. For example, a flower or a plant, the height for the plant. These are continuous, so we use continuous data set for independent variable and we divide those into bins or classes. Now, we observe the shape of the graph and we see that a bell curve that shows normal distribution and we call it the data is parametric. If the data does not show a normal distribution or the data is non-parametric, well, we have to ask for a statistician. We don't get into it. If the data, on the other hand, is parametric, well, we can use descriptive statistics and we can figure out the mean, the sample's average, the range, the value between the largest and the smallest uh, values, sample size, how big is the sample, what we just gathered the data from, 
would it really represent the entire population and the standard deviation, how far the gathered data spread apart from the mean of the sample. I will just uh, explain it with the drawing. This is the mean value on this uh, place. And these are the individual values what we measured uh, left and right from the mean. These are the values. And if they are really far away from the mean, we will say the standard deviation high if we have a small standard deviation value. That means the values are close to the mean in the sample. So what that means, it's a high precision. So the usefulness of the uh, standard deviation. So if I have uh, plus minus one standard deviation from my, from my sample mean, that means 68% of the values will be between these values, between one standard deviation plus minus from the mean. If I want to be 95% confident that all of my values will be in that range, I have to take two plus minus standard deviation from the mean. Example for that, for example, if the mean of my sample measurement, whatever I had to do, is 8 and the standard deviation is 1, it means that 68% of the measured data falls between plus minus 1 standard deviation 8 plus 1 my, uh, and 8 plus uh, 8 minus 1. And 95% of my values will uh, get into two standard deviation. Variance, uh, standard deviation squared, we are not going to use that very often or probably not at all. The usage, usage of descriptive statistics now, because we you, uh, how we can use it. So number one, what we can uh, figure out is the standard error, standard error of the mean. It means that how far we are from the true mean of the population. Nobody really knows where the true mean is. Here is the bell curve, the per, the. Uh, normal distribution curve. We can use it only for normal distribution. That's the mean. And the true mean can be left or right from the mean. Nobody really knows. This is projected towards the population. And if the standard deviate, so uh, figuring out the standard uh, error of the mean equals the standard deviation over square root of n. In here we see if the sample size is small, the standard error will be big. And if uh, we have a small standard deviation, the standard error uh, will be small too. So visualizing the standard error, we are going to use error bars. So we have the bars. Uh, bar graph, for example, for the values, and we have the error bars. These represent the range of the dependent variable where the true mean of the population would uh, occur. One standard deviation gives us 68% confidence level. Two, stand two standard errors, I'm sorry, errors, uh, gives us 95% confidence. So this is the range somewhere in that orange where the true mean would be. If it's one standard error from the mean, it will be 68% confidence level. And the last point is the regression. When we are graphing, we want to just figure out how the independent and the dependent uh, variables relate to each other. We use the best fit line or the regression line. This, uh, the symbol for this is the R. If the R is close to uh, one, so it's not, not that close to one, that means the two variables are closely related to each other. If the R is zero, there's no correlation between the variables. If it's positive, the correlation is positive. And if it's negative, the correlation is negative. So 
inverse relationship uh, happens between the two variables. I hope this would uh, help you. Bye.